Kenny asked me, huh? Yes, we will. Let's just pray for Brother David right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I know you can do anything. I know you can heal immediately. Immediately, Lord, we need you to move on the scene. We need you to take that allergic reaction away. Let the swelling go down. I pray, God, under the authority of the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray, God, under the authority of a name that's above every name. It's bigger than allergies. It's bigger than whatever's causing that. I rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and speak healing into his life. I praise you for a touch right now, Lord. I praise you for a healing touch. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Boy, it's good to see y'all here. I'm, I can come to church. I can't wait to come to church nowadays. Because if I'm feeling down and discouraged, I look on a few of your faces and I don't feel it no more. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good. It's good. So scriptures say how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Praise the Lord. 2 Kings chapter number 7. That's where we're going this morning. Praise the Lord. Verse number 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to say one more time. Uh, this past Wednesday night, we, we had right at uh, 77 to 80 people here at church, uh, including the children. And uh, I tell you, you need to try to come on Wednesdays if you can at all. The Holy Ghost is moving. People's lives are being changed even through the week. Amen? And the scriptures, the, the words that have been going forward, it's, it's a, an incredible compliment to the, to the ministry when people are referring to you preaching later on in the week and how they're applying it to their lives. That's what we're wanting to get to. Anybody can say good job. Matter of fact, there's churches all over the world that as the preacher stands by the door, everybody says, good job, good job, enjoyed it. Anybody can do that. But somebody that really takes the word and applies it to their life, that's when you start separating the sheep from the goats, if you will. Is when people take the word of God and apply it to their lives. And it works. How many can testify that the word of God works when you apply it to your life and you obey the word of God? This word of God, this what we're about to deliver over this pulpit is the most powerful force on planet earth. Bub, will you get daddy some more water, please? Amen. Praise the Lord. Then Elisha said, How many of you, now we like to preach this. I even preach some sermons about that there's no such thing as tomorrow. Brother Billy Dubb's got a sign up in his barbershop that said, free haircuts tomorrow. Well, guess what? Nobody but Bobby Little Valley gets free haircuts at the <laughs> barbershop. And that's because they flip a coin fart and Bobby beats him every time. Tomorrow doesn't exist, but, but, how many times, my Lord, the Holy Ghost is going to help somebody this morning, and I mean, he's going to rock your world this morning, you better just get ready. How many of us get up in the morning early, and we start off saying, if I can just make it through today, if I can just get through today, tomorrow's going to be a better day, Huh? We're, we're always, by nature, believing that tomorrow's going to be a better day. Huh? We believe that God holds the future. It's just right now that we have trouble dealing with. 
right? It's just the right now that we have to deal with. And we don't really understand and we don't really comprehend. But because we can imagine and we can think of how, how good the Lord is or, or how the very fact that the future is unknown, that we know tomorrow is going to be a better day. I want to preach to you a message I have preached before, though it's been many moons ago, on what a difference a day can make. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Now when I, when I pasted this in my, my, my dilly here, I, I just became, Brother Pete, overwhelmed at the power in those words. Hear ye the word of the Lord. If the Lord says it, there is no power on heaven, earth, or in hell that can stop it. If the Lord says it, it's written in concrete, signed, sealed, and delivered, even if it's 100 years from now. If he says it, take it to the bank. That's why saints of God and Brother Rice and I were talking about it this morning. We're having a great move of the Holy Ghost around here. We're having a wonderful move of the Holy Ghost. I love it. I feel the presence of the Lord in prayer meeting and, and praying by myself. And the thing is, is it's not just happening here. I've got friends and, and, and guys that I talk to all around or that I check up with on the Internet. Everybody's getting the Holy Ghost all over the place. Miracles, signs, and wonders, churches are growing. And I think the reason for that, Brother Robbie, is not necessarily because of any great thing we've done, but I believe God is getting ready to rapture His people to call His church home. And I believe that His compassion and His love and His desire for people to be saved is so strong that he's pouring out his spirit in a fresh way. I believe that. I believe it. Because I'm excited about what God's doing for us and it's happening all over the place. All over the place. I believe the Lord is getting ready, preparing his people for something. Which ultimately will be the rapture. If you're here this morning, and I'm fixing to move on into my lesson. But if you're here this morning and you're not ready to meet him, you need to get yourself that way real fast, quick, and in a hurry. I can't tell you anything any more powerful or any more comforting than to tell you that he ain't come yet. There's still hope. Elisha said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Now you're thinking, many of you are thinking, well, what's the big deal about that? So they're going to have a blue light special on flour and barley tomorrow. Big deal. I watched the sale bill for Walmart and Fred's and Food Giant and Ramey's and wherever else all the time. That happens all the time. Not necessarily this case. Because here's what's happening. Samaria, the city of Samaria is surrounded. The king of Syria, his name is Ben-Hadad, has chosen to besiege the city, which means to lay siege to it, which tells us now, I, I, there's a lot of intricacies to this message today. It tells us that the city that he wants is a strong city. Here's why. Because if it wasn't a strong city, Brother Pete, he would just get his army men and his G.I. Joes uh, and his Star Wars uh, and he would just go over and wipe them out. But Brother Robbie, there's a strength to this city. It's a fortified city. There's a wall around it. It's protected. So the only way, my Lord, the only way that the enemy can destroy it is cut off the lines of supply. So they would surround the city and they would just camp there, not allowing any supplies in and not allowing anybody out to, and to stop anyone or anything from coming or going, cutting off the food and the water supply. 
attacking the people not through not with swords and not with the hammers or catapults or slings or whatever they, that they had to fight with at that time but attacking the people through denying them the necessities of life. This not only causes them to weaken physically, but it demoralizes them mentally. The people of Samaria are at a breaking point. Their regular food is gone. A donkey's head is being sold for 80 pieces of silver. Now, what's the first thing that jumps out at you when you read that? Where else do we hear about pieces of silver? Many different places. But they betrayed Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver. Soon as I read that, Brother Robbie, I thought a donkey's head's worth more than Jesus in Samaria. And a half of a cab or nowadays measurement, two pints of dove's dung is being sold for five pieces of silver. They are down to just nothing. Two ladies have fallen to the point where they have resorted to cannibalism to survive. The king has been asked to arbitrate a disagreement between them because they decided to bowl and eat one baby today and bowl and eat the other one tomorrow. And they did it today, but the second lady reneged and hid her child and refused to do it. The king, being so disgusted with where they have sunk to, declares that he plans on beheading the prophet Elisha before the day is out. Elisha had brought some Syrians into Samaria shortly before this. Remember, that's when, that's when the, the, the kingdom of, of, of the Syrians surrounded Elisha and his servant. And Elisha said, open up my servant's eyes uh, that he can see that they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And the Syrians were struck with blindness. And Elisha and his servant led a whole company of them into the city of Samaria. The king wanted to kill all of them. But Elisha said, we're not going to mistreat them that way. When they received their sight, they fed them with bread and water and turned them loose. Now those same Syrians have come back and are besieging the city of Samaria. Not only that, from our passage of Scripture, it appears that Elisha has undoubtedly been trying to convince them, you just wait on the Lord and he's going to come through for us. He's been trying to tell the people that God is still in control and it doesn't matter how bleak it looks right now, he's coming through. How, do you, how many of you realize and, and remember that's hard for us to think sometimes? That's hard for us to remember sometimes that no matter how dark the night, that the morning's coming. That, that the Lord God Almighty is still strong enough to deliver us. That's when you go to being, from being led by sight to being led by faith. From being led by the flesh to being led by the spirit. The king sends a messenger to Elisha. And he tells him this. This problem that we're having, this evil that we're having is from the Lord. The Lord did it to us. Why should I wait on the Lord any longer? He said, look what the Lord has caused to happen to us. Look what us living for him has caused to happen to us. If I, had, if I hadn't made an effort to try to live for God, I wouldn't be going through this. Elisha, it's your fault. You kept telling us to wait on the Lord, and look what's happened. All this evil. I got ladies fighting over eating each other's babies. That's how far we've fallen. Elisha, all he's thinking is, why didn't you just wait on the Lord? Why didn't you just wait on the Lord? The king says, I'm not waiting on him. I'm not waiting on him. Look what the Lord has caused to happen to us. It was an excuse for rebellion. And the response is, why should I trust him any longer? 
This is a common response to opposition. Because when the enemy comes against you, the devil will begin to talk in your ear and tell you you're better off not living for God. It's all designed to destroy your relationship with God. Remember, and if you weren't here Wednesday night, you certainly missed it because this applies. Lacey, I know she got it because she put it on Facebook, praise the Lord. Thank God for Facebook, at least today. Tomorrow may be a different story. But we don't control what goes on around us. We do control how we respond to it. We do control. And Elisha, Brother Billy, is preaching. Just wait on the Lord. He don't fail. He don't fail. We're talking about Elisha that has seen his master go away to heaven. Elijah caught up by a whirlwind into heaven. We're talking about guys, that have, uh, a man that has benefited from tremendous amount of miracles and the Lord has always showed up. Always showed up. And he's saying, wait, hold on, wait. He's preaching, just wait on the Lord. And everybody says we ain't waiting on him no more. Or the king does. The people have used the calamity to both benefit in one way charging exorbitant prices on unclean animals and bird doo-doo. And as an excuse to turn away from God and to stop trusting in him. Then Elisha said, and I want to tell you the same thing this morning, hear ye the word of the Lord. Don't give up. Don't back down. Don't, uh, don't stop waiting. Don't stop holding on. Because Elisha said to the people, tomorrow about this time. I don't know what tomorrow holds, uh, but I know who holds tomorrow. I don't know what may be going to happen tomorrow, but if I just make it through today, the hand of the Lord is upon my life. Hear ye the word of the Lord. What a difference a day can make. Brother Billy, I love preaching this gospel. I love preaching that there's hope and that there's immediate hope. There's immediate change that can take place in your life and it doesn't involve what goes on around you. It involves what's in you and how you look at things. That's where the change takes place. It's a change in perspective. It's a change with whose eyes you're looking through. Tomorrow, about this time, he said, Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for one shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Now, you got to understand something. Now, think about this. Think about it now. Brother McKinney, they have got down to where they're cutting the head off their donkeys and people will give 80 pieces of silver, 80 shekels for one donkey's head. And the they're bowling babies and eating them, and they're selling dove dung. They are now scraping up bird excrement and selling it. Let us sink in just a minute. These people got it tough. We're talking to a beat down people, Brother Pete. We're talking to a people that are demoralized. We're a king that has given up all hope. And the prophet of the Lord says, tomorrow, everybody say tomorrow, tomorrow. about this time, 24 hours, they're going to be selling flour for little or nothing and two measures of barley for little or nothing tomorrow. Well, they looked at him like some of y'all look at me sometimes. Now, I just got to ask you something. I'm not as crazy today as I was a few months ago, am I? Huh? Hadn't I been preaching what the Lord was going to do for months? And sometimes there wasn't a peep to be heard in the place. I, I, I was so nutty I had to amen myself. But look what the Lord's doing. Brother Pete, they looked at him like he's crazy. Who wouldn't? They are under siege from an enemy that ain't letting nothing in or nobody out. They are eating unclean. The donkey is an unclean animal, forbidden by the law to eat it. And you know cannibalism is against the law of God. And the prophet says, tomorrow, 
there's going to be plenty. <laughs> then the messenger said, the one that the king leaned on his advice said, I'm not sure this could happen if the Lord opened up the windows of heaven and poured them out on us. So basically what he's saying is, that's a miracle I don't even think God can do. Huh? Elisha said, now I want you to hear me right now, your faith is important. It's important that we keep our faith. Because Elisha told the unbelieving Lord, the unbelieving messenger, listen here, buddy, you're going to see it come to pass, but you will not be able to partake of it. Now, I don't know about you, and I want you all to listen to me now. Don't, don't, don't ignore me. It happened to Moses, Brother Robbie. It was through unbelief. It was through responding to the people instead of responding to God. Okay, I do not want to be one that sees what God's going to do and not be able to participate in it. But Elisha told him, because you don't believe, you're going to see it come to pass. But you're not going to be able to partake of it. But really, who can blame him? How can we go from nothing to an abundance in one day? There were four leprous men. I know I've preached this before, but this is a whole new thing I believe the Lord showed me yesterday. There were four leprous men a little outside of the city. I can't believe, Brother Robbie, I've been hearing this story since I was knee high to a grasshopper, and I never saw this till yesterday. They're not under siege. Because they were never welcomed in the city in the first place. Leprosy was the most dreaded disease of the day. It worked at your flesh. Eating away your flesh until you withered up and died. After losing fingers, hands, arms, toes, feet, legs, etc. And the last thing it destroyed was your mind. And then you were dead. It was considered unclean under the law. But the reason they weren't under siege is that they were not allowed in the city when times were good. They weren't there in the time of blessing. So they couldn't be there in the time of opposition. They were unclean. Not only were they considered nasty, they probably were nasty. If you realize and see pictures as I have of people that have leprosy, it, it rotted the flesh of living people. And they were not considered worthy to be around good, clean folks. Listen to their conversation, the Bible tells us, of four lepers that nobody wanted, that the only reason they were hanging together was because of their common calamity. Come on, y'all stay with me now. They said, we're sitting here, and we're going to die regardless. Why shouldn't, why should we just accept dying? If we go into the city where we once weren't welcome, but now would fit in, we will surely die because they're starving to death. Our only hope is to go to the enemy's camp and see if we can find something to help us. And if the enemy kills us, we were dying anyway. In short, we find four men totally by themselves with nothing to lose and everything to gain. Now you got to see this. And they rose up in the twilight. Everybody say in the twilight. That's the last bit of daylight before the sun goes down to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they got to the outskirts of the camp, they found that the camp was empty. 
The Bible says, Brother Pete, that the Lord had made the Syrians to hear the sound of chariots and horses as it were a great host of soldiers. They imagined that they were hearing the sound of an army of mercenaries that the Israelites had hired. Wherefore, they arose and fled, the Bible says. Y'all didn't see that, did you? See if you can find the scripture for me. Back it up to when the lepers rose up. Back up six. I'm sorry to mess you up. Back up to five. Somebody read that for me real good and loud. About to tell the first comma. All right. Go to number seven. Keep reading. All right. That's good. Thank you. Y'all didn't get it, I don't think. You got it, didn't you, Brother Robbie? When the four lepers made their mind to get up and go. Not when they got there to fight the battle, but when they made the decision to get up and go. The same time the four lepers are moving, the Lord starts moving. Why sit we here until we die? We got nothing to lose. I couldn't help but be amazed as I thought we live in a world that they look at us and start lifting all, listing off all the reasons why they can't be Pentecostal. But I come to tell you the truth of the matter is they have nothing to lose and everything to gain. But it may be that the Lord is waiting on some, some ostracized folks to get up and move so he can work. Amen. The Lord worked on the enemy's mind. At the same time that the lepers begin to move. They arose and fled in the twilight. And left their tents and their horses and their asses. Even the camp as it was. And fled for their life. Oh come on now. You got to see this. Think well if I just make it through today. I'm beat down. I'm wore down. I'm afflicted. I'm bruised. I just don't feel much like a winner today. But tomorrow's going to be a better day. You think about it just a minute. Four old, and I'm going to use this word because I think it best describes them. Brother Billy, four old mangy, rotten carcasses bound up the best that they can walking down a dusty path into the enemy's camp, limping and hobbling. Brother Robbie, incomplete. Bodies racked by leprosy. I might teach this again next week. I got to study and pray. When I get strong like them, then I'm going to do great things for God. When I learn to sing good songs, I'm going to do great things for God. When I learn to preach the gospel, I'm going to do great things for God. I come to tell you that all you got to do is decide to get up and go. And when you go, he goes with you. And he can turn four lepers uh, into a mighty army, uh, to a mighty group of soldiers uh, with the sound of horses and the sound of chariots. Uh, and the devil will be defeated before you ever make it to the battle. Amen. Oh, come on. I don't... How do we go? Why did they go to the enemy city, Brother Terry? Because they had faith that they would find something there one way or the other. Either I'm going to be blessed or we're going to take a trip sooner than we planned. Amen. 
and the enemy oh, come on you got to see it you got to see it the whole host of the Syrians fled for their life from four old broke down lepers because God stepped in because God said tomorrow All I come to tell you is what a difference a day can make. You may be going through struggles today. You may be going through trials today. You may not be feeling on top of the mountain today. You may not, you may not even feel like that you need to lift your head today. You may even feel unworthy to be in the house of God. But I come to tell you what a difference. What a difference a day can make. What a difference a day can can make they imagine that they were hearing the sound of an army of mercenaries is the Lord waiting on the downtrodden to get moving faith a desire that is bigger than fear a realization that we have nothing to lose and everything to gain the Syrians left their tents their horses and their asses they left their camp as it was and fled for their life their enemy was not a mighty host. It was just four little lepers that God said, I can use them. See, God, my Lord, God has blessings for us. God has plans for us. God has big dreams for us. Just like he did for the children of Israel, Brother Pete, he intended for Goliath to go down. The, the end was never in doubt, Brother Robbie. All that was in doubt is who's somebody I can use. While the Samaritans are refusing to wait on God, they're beginning to resort to their own means for old mangy lepers. Well, why do we sit here till we die? We better get to moving. We better get to doing something. What a difference a day can make. I come to talk to an afflicted prayer warrior. I come to talk to a broke as a joke soldier. I came to talk to a mighty elder whose, bottles, uh, whose body is racked uh, with arthritis uh, and all the things that come with age, uh, whose mind may not be as sharp as it once was. Uh, I come to talk to the new convert uh, who don't feel like they know as much Bible as they need to know. There's all of us uh, have something that can hinder us uh, if we'll let it be magnified in our minds. Uh, but if we'll realize uh, I got nothing to lose uh, and everything to gain, uh, my family can be saved. Uh, I can see my neighbor neighbors be healed and delivered. I, I can go to the grocery store and see somebody be healed in Jesus' name. I've got nothing to lose. Amen, amen. I've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, but we've all got reasons why we can't do it. Huh? I've had people come tell me lately, when I, when I get to learn the Bible as good as you, then I'm going to do it. That, that's, that's something the devil tries to tell you. If you're waiting on you till you get qualified, you're not going to get there. Amen. Can I get meddlesome right now? I appreciate your permission. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Get the picture now. The city of Samaria. They are worshipers of the true God, Brother Pete. They have Elisha the prophet as their spiritual advisor, their spiritual leader. But there is no victory in Samaria. They are a defeated people. They have Elisha, Brother Robbie. He did twice as many miracles as Elijah. He caught the mantle of Elijah. He smote the Jordan River and it parted. Listen, we're talking about a fella. Now, you think about this just for a minute. 
one of these days I'm just going to put all your names in a hat and pull them out, and I'm going to let you preach, whoever's name I pull out. Well, bro, Brother Rice, my neck, my back, my shoulders all killing me. It, brother, brother Billy is just like uh, being tied up to 100 pounds of dynamite. We're talking about a man, Brother Doyle, Brother Robbie, that's living amongst them. You better grasp a hold of this right now. When he died and they buried him, there was so much power of God on him they, that they were carrying another dead man and some bandits came up on him and they threw the dead man in Elisha's grave and when he hit his bones, he came alive. That's in the Bible, Brother Billy. That's scripture. He was dead and dried up in the grave. And when that dead man fell on his bones, he came alive. And that man, you think about it just for a minute. That man is the one living in Samaria. And they're bowling their babies and eating them. Until four lepers came along. I hope you see where I'm going with this. That you know why we're having revival? And I hope you all understand that I mean no offense by this. You know why we're having revival? It's because some people outside the camp said, I believe I'm going to go get some help. Y'all have to forgive me for keep pointing you out all the time. But I'm going to keep looking over here while I'm up there. Because when I see these new fresh faces, you just feel them like fresh water pouring out of heaven. Just feel encouragement. Hey, you understand, we sometimes lose perspective. When we just sit without the water moving, we get stagnant. But... That's why we can't sit by and say, well, we had a few new people this month. Let's wait two or three months. No, 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 no. A thousand times, no. We got to get some of these new folks filled with the Holy Ghost because they're the ones that's bringing the hope. They're the ones that's bringing faith. Brother Billy, they're the ones that's bringing refreshing. You think about this just for a minute. Do you stay with me? Please stay with me. When the lepers came into the camp, they went into one tent. They found food. They found drink, silver, and gold. This is kind of comical as I begin, as I begin to think about it. They found drink and silver and gold and clothes. Can you see? Can you see these poor old wretched fellas trying to hold on to their crutch? and got, got a wad of stuff under their arm, limping out of the tent, and they run and hit it. Now, listen, that's in the Bible. Brother, Brother Rice, they run and hit it, because you know why? They're, what they're thinking? I got better grab all I can, because they're coming back. This is in the Bible, okay? And the Bible said they came again and went in another tent and gathered up all kinds of gold and stuff and run it under their arms. They was the original looters. And carried it all out and went and hit it. And then, the, then, they, then they said, we do not well. I'm talking about the refreshing. They have been kicked out of Samaria. They are not welcome. The only reason that they're free to go to the enemy's camp is because they weren't allowed in the home base. Brother Shannon, they said, we do not well. This is a, can I tell somebody we do not well? This is a day 
of good tidings. And we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come. Let us go tell the king before something happens. So they came to tell the king. And the king said, it's a trick. It's a trick. He said, the enemy knows we're hungry. And they are hid in the field. And when we come into their camp, they're going to get us. You say, well, what's going on? What's going on is, is we're seeing the after effects of what happens when your faith is gone. There has been a miracle handed to them on a silver platter. And because, now thank you, you just think back a few minutes. This is the same outfit that Elisha told them tomorrow about this time. Ain't no way it can happen. Till the three musketeers and Robin Hood showed up. Still bandaged up, still rotten and oozing. But with a hideout full of gold and silver and raiment and blessings that they decided we didn't do well. Look at here. Look at here. And the king said, it's a trick. Now this jumped out at me again too. We see it with Naaman and we see it in other places. One of his servants said to him, let's just say, he actually says we got five horses left that we haven't eaten. Let's send a few of them out. And check and see because we got nothing to lose. I want you to see here. Now listen to me right now. You've got to grasp a hold of this and I'm about done. Or I'm just about going to quit. The servant said, we got five left. The king said, let's send two out. They took, therefore, two chariot horses, and the king sent to the Syrians, go and see. And lo, the Bible says the way was full of garments and vessels which the Syrians had cast away in their haste to leave. They were so afraid. The enemy was so afraid that they just left all their stuff. And Brother McKinney, the Bible said the way was cast full of blessings because the Lord said tomorrow about this time. And 7 and 16 says, And the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. What a difference a day can make. From starving to full, from poor to rich, what a difference a day can make. Second Corinthians 6 and 2, for he saith, I have... Somebody grab a hold of this uh, and hide it in your heart uh, and grasp a hold of it uh, like there's nothing in the world going to take it out of your hand. Look at the scripture now. Look at the scripture. Because he said, hold up, Jack. Come on now, I ain't preaching my guts out for us just to sit here. He said, I've heard you. That's the first thing. I've heard you. You say, well, what's been tough? I'm crawling along. The donkey in the cabin's looking good. I got nothing left. I got no hope. But the Bible said, for he saith, I've heard you. 
My ears ain't shut up. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. And in the day of salvation, I have secured thee. That word means I have kept you. Behold, now, everybody say now. Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. What a difference a day can make. I don't care what yesterday was. I don't care what you're going through today. Jesus said, now is the day of salvation. Today's a new day. It's a fresh day. You say, why? Because the psalmist said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The reason why salvation is here is because yesterday's gone and we're living in tomorrow. It began when the lepers moved. Faith was low in the city. No hope of escape. They have all but given up. And then the ones that were on the outside brought deliverance. The ones, the new ones brought deliverance. They were the only truly free ones of the whole city. And God made them strong in the eyes of the enemy. Understand, for victory, it doesn't matter even how you see yourself. It doesn't even matter how you really are. True victory is how does your enemy view you. And when you're struggling, struggle with your mouth shut. Because even if I feel like I'm losing, I want the devil to think I'm winning. That's right. Hallelujah. Huh? This little light of mine. Because if I can get the devil convinced I'm winning. Next thing you know, I'm going to wake up and realize his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy, joy cometh in the morning. In the morning. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The cry for this hour is, this is no time to give up. We have nothing to lose. Why sit we here idle? This is a day of good tidings. Spread the word. Show the vision. Live the life. Uh, uh, better is one day uh, in the presence of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere. Let's stand. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Anybody have any idea when that is? What fully come means? It means the sun has risen on another day. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it set upon some of them. It set upon a few of them. No, the Bible said it set upon each of them. And they were all. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why I can stand with faith and declare to you what a difference a day can make. 
what a difference a day can make. Because life may hit me in the mouth. I may have two black eyes, my nose bleeding, blood running out of my mouth, bruises all over my body. But inside, inside, he said, I've heard you. And I've kept you. And now, and now is the day of salvation. You've got to believe it. You hear me right now. I'm not preaching. It's, it's not some kind of pie in the sky preaching. I'm telling you that the Holy Ghost changes your life. Now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Do you know everything you need to know? No. Are you as strong as you need to be? No. Do you know the, how to quote scriptures and how to preach and all that? No. But that ain't what keeps you. It's the Spirit of God within you. That keeps you. I just got to tell somebody. Tomorrow about this time. They're going to sell a measure of fine flour for a shekel. And they're going to sell two measures of barley for a shekel. Thus saith the word of the Lord. Brother Robbie, I can't help but think. I knelt down the other morning. I always leave my phone. I always leave my phone back here on the back table turned off or in my truck turned off. Because for some reason, I come to pray at 8 o'clock and I usually don't leave till 9 or a few minutes after Brother McKinney. That's the most popular hour for everybody throughout the whole day, throughout the whole universe. So I leave my phone, but this day I brought it like a dummy. I learned my lesson, by the way. I got a text message. But wasn't even that really that big of a deal, Brother Billy. But it was a problem. It was a problem. And I was feeling the Holy Ghost more, and I was getting good, just, just getting into praying. And I got a text message about a problem. Well, Brother McKinney, before I knew it, I was still praying, but all my prayers had turned to the problem. All I could think about was the problem. And I'd start praying a little bit, and before you know it, I was starting to think again. But, but think about this just for a minute. I wasn't praying or wasn't thinking. My God, please somebody just grasp this. I know I've put some of you to sleep this morning. That's all right. That's all right. Think about this just for a minute. Brother Billy, I wasn't thinking about what am I going to do with the problem. I was thinking, am I going to do this or am I going to do this? 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 Now you say, well, what do you, what do you mean? It? I'll tell you what the Lord revealed to me. And I began to praise him for possibilities. Because I wasn't at the place where there were none. But I was at the place where I was choosing And when I began to praise him for possible, I praised him, Brother Billy, that I had options. I praised him that there were possibilities. I praised him because it was not hopelessness, but it was about possibilities. And if he's heard me,